I'm John Schrott, and this is On The Spot. Today we're going to be talking with one of our architects, Ben Clements, who has a specialty regarding athletic facilities, primarily for K through 12. And, you know, Ben, we're kind of in this experience economy where everybody wants the best experience in everything that they do. How does that overlay when you're working on K through 12 uh, athletic facilities? Uh, it's really about um, using those resources that, that the school districts have in the best possible way. Um, so a lot of it, a lot of what we do is to engage with the school district and find out what their actual needs and wants are. Um, everybody wants the best of the best for their students and their kids, but there's the reality of, of what things cost and, and making sure that we're being responsible to taxpayer who are funding many of these projects. Um, through those conversations, we usually can narrow things down to what the true guiding principles of a project are gonna be, and we use those principles to then filter any decisions that get made through. And almost always there's a, a fiduciary responsibility that, that overlays all of that. So when you're going through that process, um, do you engage the students to find out really what they're looking for and, and and you know what benefits them best? Yeah, I, th I think we, we try to engage the entire school community because athletics are sometimes the most outward facing mm. and most public um, and accessible part of a school community. Um, there are, you know, alums, boosters, the cheerleaders, the band, teachers, students are all involved. So the more opinions we get, the better feel we get over what the culture of that school is and what needs they they really need in, in any new project. Do you find in that process that there's a, a, a difference when you're working in a rural district versus a suburban district? Or are kids just kids? I mean, at, at a certain point, kids are just kids. Um, athletics, you know, the, the sport may change, but the focus is, you know, there's a passion about athletics in all over the country. You know, and where I grew up in Kentucky, it's basketball. Here, it's, it's football. So... Um, but I will say, I think in more rural communities, the community aspect of the sports is maybe a little bit more focused. There's there's fewer things going on in some of those. And the, the Friday night football game mm. is the event. So creating an experience that highlights that and allows that to be as positive and, and connecting as it can be is, is a little bit different in a rural community. What are some of the unique things that... Um students these days really want to have as part of their athletic experience? Um, I think it's that school spirit is, is always been big. I don't know if that has changed, but I think having a place that feels like theirs um, and with sports, you're part of a team and it, it feels a little bit more like your space rather than the classroom is sort of the administration or teacher space. Mm -hmm. um, so I think making it feel like a home, giving it um, that pride in that space is it, it helps set those those places apart. That's really interesting. I never thought about that, that the classroom is kind of the teacher space, but sports become um, more uh, towards the students. That's, that's interesting. So then why are you so passionate and interested in, in you know, focusing uh, your architectural career on, on this aspect of things? Um, I mean, I grew up playing sports and that was always a big part of my childhood. Um, I think I kind of mentioned it before, the community aspect is, is big for me. It really ties together um, an entire school district, sometimes an entire town with the work that we do. Um, and it's, it's a little bit more fun and playful. You can be a little bit more bold. You can be a little bit more uh, out of the box and, and um, not as conservative, I guess. You can, you can stretch the limits because it is a little bit, there's an energy about what you're designing for that needs to make its way into the architecture. Interesting. Yeah. So where do you think um, as we move forward is, are there trends that you're seeing unfold or, uh, you know, where is this all going to move? Um, I think the, the trends that we're seeing are more um, 
flexibility of spaces. Um, sports floors for so long used to be, you know, you had a gym and you built a wood floor because that was right. that's what you play basketball on. And while that's still the case, and a high performance wood floor is still some of the best floors you can play basketball on, the reality is a, a gym at a high school or a, a middle school is used for everything. It's where the school dances are, it's where graduation is, it's where uh, assemblies are. Um, so that floor has different needs and, and the technology for multi-use sports floor has come a long way. So, you know, seeing things like that, um, there's technology and how it gets incorporated um, with almost video game like um, mm. PE activities where they can project on a wall or project on a floor and create a dynamic surface that can change based on age and oh, need. Wow. It's, it's, it's not your old high school gym anymore. It's, things are changing. Well, on turf, right? Turf. Yeah. I mean, e yeah. even in rural communities, people are turfing fields, right? Turf is, uh, again, technology with that has come a long way. I know there's there are still questions that need to be asked with, with turf versus grass, but the maintenance, the ability to play after inclement weather, which in Western Pennsylvania we're, we're full of, uh, and again, the need to put so many activities on the on the same field really lends itself to the turf field yeah. most of the time. Well, Ben, thanks for sharing this morning. Uh, until next time.